Caleb got up and furiously kicked some rocks. F fine I won't do it. I'll think of another solution then. As Natalie's tears dropped, Caleb sighed and sat down. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't cry, please. Let's talk this over. You'll just be acting, and it's only for a month, right? And are you sure he's paying you a huge amount for it? Yes, I'll just be a fake girlfriend. I'll never fall in love with that jerk, ever. Okay, fine. I'll agree on it now, but on one condition. What is it? There should be no touching. Natalie was surprised at how jealous Caleb could be. But he wants me to convince everyone that we're really dating. How can we do that if we can't even hold hands? I just realized that I sounded ridiculous. Never mind. It won't mean anything, Caleb, I swear. And I'll give you a part of the payment for your mom's expensive treatments. Nat, no. You're the one who'll work for this, not me. We promise to protect and help each other, remember? Just support me on this for a month and we'll get you some money for your mom. I... I support you, of course. You're mine, okay? Always. Natalie was nervous to meet Duke the next day. He was already at the cafe when she arrived. You're seven minutes late. Now, first order of business, I need you to transfer to my school. What? Is that necessary for a month's job? Yes, it is. Don't worry, I can easily transfer you back and forth. My family has all the connections. Oh, yes. Your family rules this place. How can I forget that? Here's the contract. Read it and sign below. The contract was short and simple. It was valid for a month, but could be extended if needed. And if she'd break it, she would have to pay back Duke's $50,000 debt. This jerk has pulled a checkmate on me, and there's no backing out now. But I'm not going to make it easy for him. He'll wish he wasn't stuck with me as his girlfriend. On her first day of work, she was awestruck at how big Duke's school was, and everyone was wearing clothes that looked more expensive than a thousand cows. As she was walking towards the main building, a fancy sports car suddenly dashed into the parking lot. Natalie's jaw dropped as the driver stepped out. It was Duke, and he looked dashing. Girls started to surround him, but to everyone's surprise, Duke walked up to Natalie and put his arm around her. There you are. Did you sleep well last night? I... I didn't, because I couldn't stop thinking about you. Can you stop being so adorable for a second? It's killing me. Dude, who's that? This is Natalie, my girlfriend. In one corner, Duke's sister Harper was fuming. Of all the girls in the world, he chose her? I've seen that dumb peasant a few times on the farm. How can Duke be so stupid? On their way to class, Natalie suddenly pulled Duke to a corner. Why did you kiss me? What are you doing? Making things convincing? Have you read the contract that you signed? Holding hands and kisses on foreheads and cheeks are allowed. Natalie didn't take that part seriously. She wanted to ask more questions, but she remembered the rules in the contract. Don't ask personal things. Later that day, while she was putting things in her locker, Harper and her friends appeared behind her. Is it just me, or does it smell like mud in here? It definitely smells like dirt. Oh, farm girl, I didn't see you there. I'm sure you saw me, Harper. Don't get smart with me, farm girl. Just because you're my brother's girlfriend doesn't mean I need to be nice to you. But you could be nice to me just out of basic human decency, right? Or are you unfamiliar with that? Natalie started to walk away, but Harper got mad and pulled her hair. You little... What's going on here? Tell your tacky girlfriend to behave herself. And why are you dating her anyway? Did you just pick the first girl you saw on the farm or something? Mind that mouth, Harper. And what's wrong with her? She's literally perfect. You could have chosen anyone, Duke. She's nothing like us. I'd rather not spend my time listening to someone who talks about bags and 10 different shades of pink all day. Natalie is so much more interesting. Wow, he's a really good actor. But God, I'm being humiliated here. I will make sure that this Duke regrets this decision. Duke then warned everyone to be good to Natalie, including his sister and her friends, and they had no choice but to obey the king of their school. The next day, Natalie prepared embarrassing couple shirts for both of them and gave it to him during their basketball practice. Happy 200th day, my baby king! Everyone started laughing, and she thought Duke would be really annoyed. <laughs> oh, now I get it. It's because you literally worship me. I like the shirt, babe. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's wear the shirts now? Suddenly, Duke accidentally tripped and spilled his bottle of juice over the shirts. Oh, no. Too bad they've become dirty. Maybe next time, but I appreciate the gesture. Natalie felt mad, 
because her plan of embarrassing him had completely backfired. Maybe she needed to try harder. So later that day in the canteen, she just stared at him intensely. I can't believe I'm dating the most handsome man in the universe. Just look at his eyelashes. They have the perfect length and curl, and don't even get me started with his beautiful nostril hair. Natalie didn't care if everyone thought she was an obsessed girlfriend, as long as she was pissing Duke off. Duke is very private. So, any exclusive info? Oh, he's a screamer. Especially around eight-legged living things. What? Don't be shy, Dukey. We all have our fears, right? Actually, I have a collection of spiders at home. See? Sorry, guys. She really loves to joke around sometimes. That happens when she forgets to drink her meds. You know, for her crazy problem. Natalie kicked his foot under the table. Just crazy for you, baby king. But she really went overboard a few days later when Duke was part of a school play. He was playing the role of a prince, and just when he was about to kiss his princess, Natalie screamed from the audience. My baby king, please, don't kiss the witch. Your lips only belong to me. Everybody stared at her in shock, including Duke. He tried to resume his acting, but forgot his lines and became embarrassed. He then turned to leave and tripped over something that sent the whole set crashing down on the princess. Oops. And right after, Duke came marching to her angrily. What do you think you're doing? Who asked you to act like some crazy melodramatic girlfriend? You just embarrassed me in front of everybody. We've been working on this play for months and you ruined it. What is wrong with you? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't think I'd have such a strong effect on you that you'd forget your acting. I was just trying to be convincing, like you said. Don't play these stupid games with me, Natalie. I know what you're trying to do and it's not gonna work. You agreed to be my girlfriend and unless you have $50,000 suddenly, you'll act like a normal girlfriend or you'll go to jail. And trust me, I won't feel bad about your poor butt rotting in there for a second. You better behave. I don't need people to think I'm dating an obsessed psycho. Fine, I got it. Can you let my arm go now? He did, and she pushed him away as she left. Duke was still really mad at Natalie when he got home, but he started feeling bad for the way he'd spoken to her. And to make matters worse, he instantly had his mom breathing down his neck. Where's this girlfriend you've been telling us about? It's been a week. Invite her for dinner tomorrow. Duke knew he and Natalie needed to bond more so things would be more natural between them, or his mom would be able to tell in a second that it was fake. He convinced his mom to give him another week and spoke to Natalie the next day. Listen, I'm sorry for the way I spoke to you. I was just disappointed about the play and I've got some things on my mind, but it's not a great excuse for my behavior. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Just don't talk to me that way again and we're cool. I won't, I promise. Uh, but we need to meet up after school today so you can get to know me and my whereabouts better. Mom wants to meet you soon and she can ask you anything. Over the next three days, Natalie memorized Duke's schedule. He was taking acting classes after school and on weekends he was managing an orphanage in town. One day, as he was driving her home, Natalie found herself talking casually to him. Duke, do you mean to pursue acting professionally? I thought you'd just take over the family business. Yeah, acting is my dream. I'd love to be able to do that freely, but mom wants me to build malls on farmlands, and I don't really want to do that. I'd like to be able to help farmers become more productive so they can have better lives, not take away their lands and leave them jobless. The more Natalie spent time with Duke, the more she realized that he actually had a heart of gold. She felt bad for judging him and making things difficult for him. Since then, she had become genuinely comfortable with him. He was just so good at acting, and there were times when she'd forget that it wasn't real. In school, he'd hold her hand, kiss her head, stare at her lovingly, and Caleb had never been this openly affectionate. It gave her a funny feeling in her tummy. One day, he even took her to a secret place, an abandoned house that he planned to renovate and give to one of the farmers someday on his retirement. Those weird feelings started bothering her. No, I'm just amazed at his good qualities, but these thoughts mean nothing. After dinner at a restaurant, Duke drove Natalie back to her house, and as she stepped out of his car, she suddenly tripped, but he caught her just in time. Natalie's world stopped when she realized how close their faces were, and her heart was racing. She snapped out of it and immediately pulled away. Sorry about that. I can be clumsy sometimes. Only sometimes. Excuse me? I said you're cute. 
You just realized that now? Duke just chuckled at her and started walking to his car. See you around, babe. Natalie suddenly forgot how to speak. Just then, Caleb suddenly appeared from the shadows. What was that, Nat? Jeez, you startled me. What was what? I saw you and Duke. Did you forget this is just pretend? It is pretend. That didn't look fake to me. That is the point. I am paid to make it believable, remember? Natalie walked close to Caleb and took his hand. Come on, Caleb, you know how I feel about you. I love you. And how do you feel about him? Like I wanna push his privileged butt on cow dung. The two of them laughed, but Natalie was still worried because Caleb kept glancing at her a bit suspiciously. Later that day, Caleb went to talk to his stepdad. Something bothering you, son? I'm scared, Dad. Nat says she hates Duke, but I can tell she likes him enough to be able to be close to him, even when there's no one around. Well, they are pretending to like each other enough to be convincing. It's just an act. I know, but still, it's Nat, and this is hard for me. Hey, none of that. Their pretend relationship is not forever. Focus on the end goal. A week later, Duke invited Natalie over for dinner with his family. As they stood in front of the door, he noticed how nervous she was, so he reached for her shaking hand and smiled. She felt a lot better instantly, and they walked in. Harper and his parents were all waiting for her in the living room, and they all looked so sophisticated and intimidating, especially Mrs. Harrison. It's a pleasure to finally meet you, darling. You're even more beautiful than the way Duke described you. I heard your mom sells root crops in the market and used to work for one of our ranches. Yes, sir. Oh, gosh. I feel sorry for us the way we have such a low-class guest. Harper, behave yourself, please. Whatever. As they had their dinner, Mrs. Harrison kept asking about their love story and relationship, and their answers thankfully matched. The Harrisons were surprisingly nice, except for Harper, who kept throwing death glares at her. After their dinner, Mrs. Harrison walked up to Natalie and took her into the kitchen. I want to give you something, my dear. Sure, ma'am. When they got there, Natalie was surprised to see a knife and a lot of onions on the counter. And then suddenly, Mrs. Harrison started chopping them herself right in front of her. They say onions can give overflowing wealth and beauty. This is my gift for you, my future daughter-in-law. Please take it. Natalie started tearing up as she took the chopped onions from her. Are you crying? You look so pretty with those tears in your eyes. No, it's just because of the onions. It's okay to be emotional, darling. Let it all out. Natalie was now freaked out at Mrs. Harrison's creepy behavior. She excused herself and headed back to the living room where Duke and his dad were talking. She told them that she had to go and Duke volunteered to walk her home. Mrs. Harrison and Harper watched them from the balcony. I don't know if you remember, but I think she's that little girl who ruined your birthday, Mom. I remember her, and that just gives me another reason to get rid of her. Did you manage to scare her away? Oh, darling, why do you think she left so early? And I just started. The next day, Natalie went to the bleachers expecting to find Duke there, but she didn't. He had asked her to come meet her there so they could discuss the next course of action after meeting his family. She went looking for him when she heard familiar voices behind one of the school buildings. She silently walked closer and peeked around the corner. It was Duke and Caleb talking. Do we have a problem? You're getting too close with Natalie. Well, she is my girlfriend. Fake girlfriend. Remember the part where it's not real? What's your problem anyway? You told me she's just a friend. Are you interested in her? Not at all. But I still care about her and don't want her getting involved with someone like you. Okay, in that case, you can stop acting like her worried dad. I'm not interested in getting involved with her. Good, because that's not part of the plan. Neither is you cornering me and telling me unnecessary things, dude. It wasn't easy staging the whole statue thing and making sure Nat was there at the right time to take the blame for it. You owe me for that, don't you forget it. I'll pay you the exact amount after this, as promised. But I didn't ask for your opinion on how I'll be handling my plan from there. So buzz off with the attitude. Duke stormed off and so did Caleb. While Natalie stood there reeling in shock. What? They set me up? Caleb helped me set up some deal with Duke? 